Hi everyone, um, thank you so much for so many of you being online already. We can see quite a lot of people already joined and people who joined before the start, so that's great great to see. Um, just a quick introduction um, from me, just to let you all know who I am. Um, so I am Charlotte Lever and I work for PwC. So I've worked for PwC for about 12 years now, so been around, around <laughs> for a while. I um, started my career working in our audit business, um, so did about six or seven years in audit and then moved to student recruitment about four and a half years ago. Um, where well, my primary role is that I look after some of the, um, we do some sponsored degrees at a few universities across the UK, but I also have a really keen focus on our inclusion and diversity agenda, um, which includes looking after our two first year opportunities that we're going to speak about a bit today. So that includes women in business and black talent in business, which hopefully by the end of this session, you'll know a little bit about what those are. Um, the question function is absolutely open for all of you. So we are going to have, I'll go through the agenda in a minute. We're going to have a really great panel uh, of three of our guys working at PwC. So feel free to ask any questions on there as um, as we do the panel. And if you have any questions as we go, feel free to put them on there as well. Um, interaction is always key here. We like, we like to get the questions in and, and answer them hopefully as we can. Um, so that's a bit about me. As I say, um, please feel free to ask questions as we go um, and I will get started on the slides now and just let you know, hopefully, a bit more information about our first year opportunities. So what are we going to cover? So um, some of you out there might know an awful lot about PwC. It might be that you know a little bit or it might be that you don't know a huge amount about, uh, about us. So I thought it was useful just to go through a few key things about PwC, our culture, our values and kind of the areas that we work in. Then specifically on first year opportunities. So I think it's really difficult um, when you first join university, particularly this year, um, to learn about what companies do for first year opportunities. Sometimes websites can be quite complicated to find. Um, and I just want to make sure that you guys are really aware of what we actually offer in terms of first year and also what we offer throughout someone's degree. Then, as I say, I've got three fantastic panelists later on who are going to join me on the stage. And um, that's an opportunity just to hear a little bit more about them, what they do at PwC, what they're passionate about at PwC. And then it wouldn't be a PwC session if we didn't talk about our recruitment process, um, which is quite different to what it was sort of five years ago. Um, and I just think it's useful for you all to know a couple of key stages that we go through now, what we're looking for a little bit more. So we have sort of five key values that we're looking for. Um, and I just wanted to pull that out for everyone. So we will, we will end after the panel on a little bit about our opportunities and how you go about applying after hopefully you've, you've liked what you've heard through the session today. So what is our purpose? So at PwC, our purpose is to build trust in society and solve important problems. This is our key kind of ethos in terms of what we do. So effectively, if a company came to us with any kind of business problem, whether it be to do with their tech, whether it be to do with their their financial statements, whether it be to do with their tax, whatever the business problem might be, we would hopefully be able there be there to support and solve that problem. We have a huge amount of expertise, um, which you'll hear a little bit more from the panel about the various things that they do later on. And it's really important that we do the right thing by society. We are a big professional services firm, so um, we are scrutinised in the media, we're scrut we, and we want to uphold really high standards and make sure we're doing the right thing by society as well. So really key that we do that as well. So that's just a little bit about our purpose, but I think it's really useful because hopefully some of that might align to your own, your own values as well. So talking of values, it's as if it was a perfect segue here. Um, thought it was useful and it is something that comes up in the recruitment process sometimes um, thinking about our values what what is it that we actually represent so we've got five key values now that we look at so act with integ integrity care make a difference work together and reimagine the possible so just wanted to pull out a couple of things here so um it's never been more key i suppose than in the last year about caring for each other and looking after each other so um as a firm we've been really fantastic about that and making sure that you know the teams that we work with or the maybe the people that we don't work with a day on a day-to-day -day basis that we reach out to them and make sure that they're okay and the firm has been really good in that it hasn't furloughed anyone during the whole of this so they've made sure to kind of care for their staff and make sure that staff well-being is really at the forefront of what we're doing um i always personally wanted to work for kind of a big corporate firm and, and that's what i wanted but i've never felt more 
protected than I feel at the minute by PwC. Um, you don't know that you're going to feel like that until obviously we've all found ourselves in this situation. So I never knew it was such an important thing to me, but it definitely has become more important over the last year. So care, I just thought it was useful to pull out a couple of examples about that and reimagine the possible. So um, I think we do this on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, kind of striving for, for the best and making sure we're doing the best by our clients and communities and the people that we work with. So every day in any kind of um, area that we work in, I would say a problem comes to us and we have to reimagine how we solve that. Um, you know more specifically more recently thinking about tech and how we can do that so if you like problem solving and you like um, thinking about things in a different way it absolutely might be a place that you want to start your career and continue through so yeah just to pull out a couple but this um there's quite a lot of really useful information on the website so if at any point you do think about applying for us or some of you might be in the process at the minute make sure you're really drilling into these values and thinking about how they align with your own because we really want to make sure that people come and work for us who who who's who really want to and, and kind of feel like their ethos and their values really align to our own so that's just a little bit about our values so that kind of underpins um, our PwC professional which I'm going to touch on in the recruitment process as well so just wanted to pull out a few things that we've done um, more specifically in, in the last year focused on um, inclusion and diversity, I guess, more specifically here. Um, obviously, in the light of um, kind of last spring, summer, some of the events that awful events that we read about in the press that we, we were doing quite a lot in, in inclusion, diversity and in that space, a really important topic. But I suppose we've expanded that even more in the light of everything that happened. So we've got a fab um, staff diversity council, which actually one of our panelists is part of. Um, so you can grill him later on around that. Um, we already had that set up, um, some council set up that were doing some great work. But this is specifically a group of staff that work for PwC that come together from all types of backgrounds to talk about um, things that PwC might be facing or or it might be external things that we need to deal with. We also have some really fantastic unconscious bias and racial awareness training that we've all as a firm been put through in the last, um, we've always done it, but um, it's become a really big focus in the last um, six to 12 months that we've all had to had to do. And, and that was really useful, just thinking about your own bias that we all do have bias, it's, it's part of us, but thinking about you know how we deal with the snap judgments we might make and things like that and that training was really good about making you think about how you react to different situations um i've already mentioned well-being and you can't have a session um at the minute without thinking about well-being with companies so we've got some really great well-being support as a company and and, and making sure that we're really looking after our staff because it can be quite a high pressured um environment working for pwc and we just want to make sure that we're doing doing the best by our um, employees at that around well-being as well we've had some really fantastic speakers recently actually internally we've had um, some sort of um, specialists in their field in terms of counseling and giving some really um, it's quite straightforward simple advice but really reminding us of some of those things that we should be doing for our well-being that's really possibly more difficult in the last year for example getting away from your desk <laughs> uh, which can be can be quite tough when you're really busy but those sessions have, have been attended by thousands and thousands of people in the firm and shows the importance that people are putting on on well-being especially in this sort of strange working environment we find ourselves in we're doing more with social enterprises and we've got some amazing charities that we've started working with in the last year as well um, and making sure that that um, we're supporting again I mentioned it already the community throughout um, the UK as well so just a little bit more specifically about what we do I wanted to just bring to the light in the last few slides about our values but what do we actually do so I've, I've said about solving um, business problems but we're actually split into these different areas so you might see it referred to as our business areas or our lines of service so some of our panelists later on will sit in different teams um, and will speak about their roles um, in, in their area of business. But effectively, we're in these, these key areas. So our audit business is kind of the bread and butter of maybe what PwC was really well known for about 10 years ago. So big companies every single year, they need someone to review their accounts. And we will go in as auditors and scrutinize those accounts, work with the client and make sure that the accounts that they're, pub they're publishing and um, that they are within reason what we call true and fair so that the stakeholders are relying on those accounts and that we're, we're pretty confident that the the numbers within reason in there are, are are what we call true and fair 
So really good place to start your career. You do, you tend to do the ACA qualification. So if you want to become a chartered accountant, I am a chartered accountant actually by trade. So still probably the proudest moment of my career becoming a chartered accountant. So if you quite like the idea of doing um, an extra qualification, but also starting your, your career in, in something quite wide like audit, where you tend to see lots of different types of business, work with lots of different types of companies and companies you might never have heard of, massive companies on the FTSE 100, whatever it might be. And starting to really um, get to grips with that. So um, tends to be a, a three year um, three year training contract that our guys in order have. Tax is very similar to that, but you specialize. So you're obviously specializing in in one area of, of a kind of, of, of a company. So it might be corporate tax or it might be um, to do with the VAT for a company. It might be to do with personal tax. Um, lots of complications at the minute with various people being abroad. So what what are the tax implications of that? What are the tax implications of setting up another company in in outside of say the EU? What what's the implications of Brexit on tax? So um, kind of more specific, I suppose, in terms of kind of tax and the work we do there. But again, you do the chartered accountancy qualification aligned to that area of the business. We've got our risk assurance department as well. So focusing on um, kind of the risk facing a company, maybe a little bit out of the financial um, focus that audit does. So quite a lot of um, project work there coming in for our risk assurance teams. We've got our consulting department, so um, lots of different parts of that. So it might be sustainability, management consulting, might be specific on economics consulting. Um, and again, this, that is slightly less focused on the, the financials of a company and might be focused on a business problem that they are currently facing and how we can support them to solve that um, problem. So um, the, there's been quite a lot of really interesting work that we've been doing to support the NHS with COVID more recently. Um, it might be that a company's thinking about implement, implementing a new um, IT system and we want to support them with that. So lots of different interesting work that we do around that. Our consulting roles tend to be a two year graduate role, just so everyone knows the sort of difference. I think it's useful for you, for you guys if you're in your first year to know the differences between the length of programme. Most people, obviously, at the end of those sort of two to three years, depending on which program they start their graduate role on, will end up um, end up moving on to kind of permanently working for us. Then tech. So when I started at PwC a little while ago, we didn't have our own business area, which shows, I guess, the massive focus on tech that we've had more recently, along with loads of different companies. The key thing here is that we get one step ahead of what our um, our clients have so that we can give them really great advice on how to use tech in their business. So we're going through a massive tech upskilling internally at the minute. So we've all done um, what we call a digital accelerator program. And that's focusing on um, kind of like the new world of Excel and PowerPoint. But um, if you haven't heard of it, it's worth Googling, but Altrix and Tableau. So we've all been trained around that. But our guys in that team are extremely busy doing things like cybersecurity work, really important and really relevant at the minute. It might be that um, it, we're trying to solve a tech problem. It might be something to do with AI we're focusing on. So anything to do with technology, I guess, um, and innovative technology will sit in there. Our deals, we don't take on as many graduates into our deals roles straight from university. Quite often, um, maybe you go into a different business area and then specialise, but we do take on some. So kind of says what it does on the tin. Very busy at the minute, the deals, guys, with um, it might be our business recovery if a company's struggling at the minute and we're trying to, to save them. Or it might be, unfortunately, a company's gone into administration and we're supporting how that happens. Or it could be a company's thinking about buying another business and we would go and consult on whether the value of that business is right and whether the company Company should be buying that business and then a couple of other things just on here we've got legal and operate so operate supports some of the amazing work that we do internally so quite often they they support the work that other other teams are doing and then legal I think quite a lot of people think this is like the legal to do with say me as an employee at PwC but it's more so that we can help support our clients um, on any legal work that they need to do as well so kind of being able to offer the whole thing and I missed off actuarial sorry the, the size of the bubble confused me there so that's if anyone's got a really Real interest in statistics that might be something you want to think about pursuing so kind of future planning and doing a lot of modeling on like what does the future of all these things mean to us for say our pension scheme say for any insurance planning that we might be doing so lots of different um, fields that you can work across really interesting work and then I work in IFS so that's internal firm services and that's um, that sort of sits to support all of these different areas whether it's like HR or HC whether it's IT whether it's student recruitment or experience recruitment so on 
on, alongside that is kind of our business unit that I sit in. So our aim is kind of to become the leading professional services firm and, and kind of a big focus of us um, and making sure that we deliver to our purpose, which I've, I've spoken about already, and our values. So just wanted to move on to hopefully what would be quite useful for everyone on the call in terms of first year opportunities. So um, we actually have two key first year opportunities. We've got our Women in Business program and actually newly launched this year, we've got our Black Talent in Business program. There are two first year programs that we have but I thought it was useful for anyone who is kind of new to thinking about what what will my career look like when I'm at university just to touch on the other things that we do throughout um throughout kind of your sort of three to four years so in your second or your penultimate year we've also got our we do women in business again so that's a first year and a penultimate year program we've got our fab summer internship program undergraduate work placement so quite a lot of you might be thinking at, at the minute that you're going to do a year's work experience um so we, we definitely offer that as well and then our final year so our biggest intake of people come from our graduate program so that's something that um that's that's something that obviously we take on we're, we're one of the biggest we take on just over around 1500 usually each year onto our grad program and just so everyone knows as well if anyone's already planning on doing a master's um if you you can also apply for our summer internship if you're in your final year of your undergrad going on to do a confirmed master's so just thought it was useful to touch upon the different different routes in to get your work experience or in terms of final year so I'll just move on to specifically talk about our two first year programs. Um, I've got some great questions already come in, which is fab. Um, so I will answer those as we go as um, a bit later on, because I think, um, but hopefully I can get to those questions or I'm hopefully going to answer some of, the, some of them as we go. So I've put the, um, the QR code there just in case anyone wants to have a look at the details on the website. But our black talent in business is um, focused on attracting more black people into the pre profession. Um, we've got a statistic on there that actually, you know, it's something we definitely need to improve on as a firm. Um, we, we don't have enough partners and we don't have enough junior staff. So this is our kind of some in, uh, our recruitment program to help attract people hopefully to PwC so it's three days so as a first year I think it's quite difficult because you don't really know you sort of what what you're interested in you're learning about your skills you're just getting used to getting used to kind of um the way of working at university so we actually only have our first year programs as three days so they're three days virtual this year they'll be paid and it's really just a taster to shadowing um you'll do some shadowing over those three days you'll hear a little bit more about the area that you might be interested in because for um black talent in business you specifically apply for a, a line of service um you'll meet some people that work for pwc you'll get to attend some internal and external client meetings but the point of this program is kind of like a bite size what what's pwc like and how does it fit in the hope that the following year you would go on to do a summer internship or a business placement. So it's kind of starting to secure your your sort of three year track. So if you're on a three year program, you might do this in year one. In year two, you might do an internship. And in, in year three, you'd hopefully get your graduate role. So starting to give you a little bit of a taste of what PwC might be like. Our women in business program, exactly the same. So at the minute, we are not that 50-50 as a firm and, and we are constantly working towards that so we have a program like this to make sure that we continue to attract women into a firm like PwC it's exactly the same as black talent in business in that it's three days it's virtual and it's a real taster session um, to start to learn about what we do and um, and hear a little bit more about PwC so um, I just thought um, just a couple of quick slide to me and then I'm going to answer a couple of questions and then go to the panel because we've got some great questions that I think are, are relevant um, as we before we get on to the panel session so just um, to pull out a couple of things I've mentioned already that we're doing in terms of um, racial equality so I've already mentioned the diversity council we've got some amazing work around colour brave and the colour brave charities we're doing some fantastic reverse, reverse mentoring that's working really well so that's effectively where someone junior mentors someone more senior We've got our brilliant network who are called the MBN or the Multicultural Business Network and they're, they've got over a thousand members at the firm and they do some amazing um, promotion, whether it be about educating people, whether it be about, um, I don't know, getting involved, they're really great about getting involved in recruitment events and things like that as well. And very similar for, for gender equality in our focus there. So we've got our gender balance network who are our internal network. We've got Tech She Can, He For She, we've done a lot of work there. Big focus at the firm on everyday inclusion and making sure that um, we we hear everyone in the meeting and, and, we're, and we're listening to them as well. 
Um, <laughs> and we've got, our, obviously, on both sides, we should have mentioned that on the slide before as well, but we've got our, we've published our ethnicity and our gender pay gap. So I'm just going to take a pause there and then we're going to go to the panel. I'm just going to answer a couple of questions that have come through. So um, can a first year student on a four year degree um, apply? Yes, you can absolutely apply that. that that's absolutely fine. Um, no problem at all. Um, in terms of actually some really good questions in terms of background to do with um, degree, there's only a few um, areas, for example, economic consulting where you need a sp specific degree we take anyone from any degree background from any university all you have to be on is on course for a 2-1 so that's the only parameter so I think we've got quite a lot of questions about degree background we don't um, apart from kind of st statistics and things like that we um, we don't look at the background anyone's come from so don't don't worry about that at all um, someone's asked if you do need to be black to apply for black talent in business so um the point of the program is to attract more black talent so that is the focus of a program like that so um uh, that the answer is yes that is that is what what we're asking that for there um do you hire Aberdeen graduates good question the oil and gas industry is thriving up there so yes we do we take on um oil and gas uh, um students into Aberdeen and no problem at all to support there um I'm just going to see what else is coming through. Hopefully I've answered a few of them. In terms of, I've got questions, a few questions about postgrads from people. So if you're doing a postgrad, you need to apply for our um, graduate programs. Unfortunately, these programs are only if you're um, kind of in your first, uh, first year or your second year. And um, women in business will be virtual this year, um, but hopefully extremely interactive for you all as well. Obviously, the tech has just moved on so much and there's loads that we can do. We use Google Hangout a lot of work. So fab. So I think the next up is I'm going to move to our panel. So I'm going to ask them to join the stage with me so that I can have a pause from chatting. <laughs> so Beth, Brian and Lala Day, if you want to um, come onto the stage, I can see a couple of people sharing, which is great. Hi, Beth. Hi. Hi, Brian. Oh, this is perfect. Hi, Lana Day. How are we all? Good, thank you. Good, good thanks. Fab, fab. <laughs> so I think what we'll do first of all is we'll just um, do quick introductions, if that's all right. And then I can definitely have a sip of water. So Beth, I can see you first. So Beth, do you want to go first? OK, so we're just going to do my little spiel. You Tell know. us who you are, Beth. <laughs> OK, so I'm Beth. I am a an associate in management consulting. I joined the firm in October. So I'm fairly new, I've only been here for like four months. Um, and my route into the firm, so I initially in first year um, did a, at the time they were doing like a females of the future event. From there it was just a bit of a taster about who PwC is. It was basically just this call, but in person. That was basically <laughs> what it was. Um, and then um, from there, they asked me to go to an assessment centre to do the Women in Business programme, um, which was a bit of fa a fast track. I know it works differently now. I know that you have to apply. Um, so I got onto that and then I shadowed for three days um, with both both men and women, actually. But um, I actually shadowed a lady who I'm actually fairly close with in my network now. She's a director um, in health. And she gave me loads of really good tips. And um, from there, I got some really good feedback and was asked to go to a partner interview from there for summer internship. Did my summer internship, was offered a grad job and then joined. So I'm like the little poster child, I guess, for women in business. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's basically how I got into the firm. Um, I don't know if you want me to go through anything else right Should now. Should we do that for everyone and then I'll ask some extra questions, yeah. So Lala Day, do you want to go next? Yeah, I'll go on. Um, so my name is Lola Day Matthew, um, and I work. I'm actually based in the Belfast office, um, as part of the deals team. Um, I've worked at the firm for about three-ish, four-ish years now, so <laughs> been a while for a little bit. Um, but yeah, and route to the firm or? Yes, go for it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, no, but I, I found it quite interesting as all the questions were popping through because I was like looking at um, all the questions around degrees. So 
my route to the firm was a bit unconventional. So I actually, I think I just saw an advert for um, a particular line of service um, in the build, in the business that I applied for. I didn't have any experience or like relevant qualifications. I hadn't studied accounting or anything that I thought was traditionally PwC, but I thought PwC is a good firm. So I applied um, and it was actually through, so I studied law as a way of background. Um, and anyone who's grown up in an immigrant household knows that there's only really three professions you can study, law, <laughs> medicine, engineering. I knew I didn't want to be a doctor. I knew I wasn't going to be an engineer. But like law seemed <laughs> the safest option. Um, but then I realized I didn't want to go into a career in law. So um, I did law and German um, just kind of on a whim to do the language as well. And it was actually through my language, um, my CV got picked up um, and that's kind of my route to the firm. Um, but yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> I love that. We need to add accounting to that list, don't we? <laughs> and Brian, you're next, your final, final panelist. Hello. Thanks, Charlotte. Hi, everyone. So my name is Brian Bob Jones and I sit in the UKIT, which is part of Internal Firm Services um, and my route into the firm. So I joined as an experienced hire back in 2015. I actually knew an ex-colleague who works in, in my department and he told me about the position. So at the time I was working at um, Transport for London as a senior commercial analyst. Uh, but if I'm honest, I really wanted to get back into IT and working with technology. So, um, and also I've never worked in professional services. So kind of there were two, two things pulling me towards uh, joining PwC. And I just thought the opportunity was, was perfect for me. So um, yeah, I, I jumped at it five, five and a half years ago. I was and, just uh, about to ask you how long you've been here. Yes, <laughs> Brilliant. So, so we've got some great panellists here. So feel free, guys. I, I can already see a few questions coming in. And Beth's already answered some of them. Well done, Beth. Um, so, Beth, can you tell us a little bit about how joining as a grad um, during COVID has been? Yeah. So... <laughs> Usually they, um, the new joiners would go to, it's called Latimer. It's like a big Devere estate um, somewhere down south. I don't really know where, in the middle of a field. <laughs> but um, basically they go for like four weeks and they have all of these sessions and everyone gets to know each other and it's quite social. So I think all of mine has been online. So because I started in October. So we actually had six weeks and it was all virtual. And we were all a bit apprehensive and even people in the firm were a bit like, oh, it's just going to be a bit different. It's going to be a bit weird. You're at a disadvantage. But you know what? We had the best time and I really didn't feel like we were disadvantaged. I mean, maybe it's because like you don't know what you're missing, but I really enjoyed it. And I think all of us did. Um, so, and I don't think it's really impacted our networking ability. I think actually it's made us a bit we sort of don't know the conventions to networking because we've been online. <laughs> so we just message people and we're like, hi, can we book some time in to chat with some really senior people? And I think if we had have been in person, we would have had this etiquette, so to speak, that we haven't really learned. So in that sense, it's actually really helped our networks because people have really welcomed us being quite forward and asking if we can chat to them. And because that's the only way we've been able to make connections and, and make friends. And I've got some really good friends who I'm still good friends with now from there. So yeah, I, I, I feel like it's it's been interesting um and it's a lot of sitting at your desk but pwc has really encouraged us to do other things so some sessions would be a walk and talk so we put our, our earphones in that pwc sent us we'd go for a walk we'd we'd listen um and there was other other things like we did yoga it was like we did those <laughs> really fun stuff like we like dressed up and we had to like do like um make like videos with our team and we all send each other's little snaps in and that's how we do it as opposed to in latimer in front of people where it wasn't virtual it was more of a sit down experience so yeah we have tried like thought of ways to make it fun that is good i'm pleased that that's how you feel that was i, I was like i've asked this question i'm not sure what the answer's gonna be so that's good <laughs> <laughs> and lala day can you tell us a little bit about the day job like what what does a typical day look like for you yeah i know there is no typical day at pwc but <laughs> Literally, I was just about to say that. Um, yeah, <laughs> every day is really different. Um, so I work in the deals line of service within forensics and forensics is one of those business units where a lot of different things take place. Like the different, like, and one thing I will say is that none of my experience like before or like, you know, from uni 
has helped in terms of what I'm doing. A lot of it is learning on the job. Um, and I think that's the beauty of the role as well. Like, um, there's so much chance to get upskilled in different areas. So at the moment, I'm working on a project, which is quite a large scale project in a very specific area of industry um, and an area that I have no experience at all. And when I came onto the project, I kind of said that I wanted to be challenged, do something new. Um, but I don't have any industry knowledge um, and being on the project has been really great because I think one of the things that's and I want I'm sure the other guys will reiterate as well but is the whole thing with transferable skills so every project I've been on there's been different things that I've picked up by working on that role and I think with PwC like if you do end up joining you'll see that there's so many different like even till now like I've been in the firm for three four years and I still learn of like different roles and different jobs that people do that I've never heard of before um, <laughs> So yeah, and there's a lot of opportunity to get involved. So aside from my project work um, and client facing work, I would get involved in a lot of the um, diversity inclusion initiatives because um, I quite enjoy working with people. And I think that was one of the big things whenever I was looking at coming to PwC was still having that interaction with colleagues, still having that kind of interaction, but also like wider community benefits. So a lot of the work that I would do with the Color Brave um, community is promotion of different initiatives locally here in Belfast and putting on events like this, so student events, um, and coming and attending. We actually had a really cool event earlier in the year um, where we had a lot of students in our virtual park, which was a really great experience as well. Um, earlier this week, actually, and I'm someone who's quite, uh, I'm, I like to say I'm a talkative introvert in that like I don't really <laughs> like, <laughs> I can talk quite a lot, but I like one-on-one, -on -one, but I got the opportunity to speak on a live stream earlier in this week, which was a really great opportunity um, and really challenged myself. So like, I'd say that's the one big thing. My day-to-day -day definitely changes, but day-to-day -day there's like little challenges within there, but I think it's fantastic because you really like, for, if there's anyone who's unsure about what you want out of your career, unsure about what you do want to do um, career-wise, because I think sometimes there's that pressure by you need to figure out where you want to be in five, 10 years. Um, but I feel like with PwC, there's really that opportunity to build different types of careers and try different things. So that's what I enjoy with my day to day, trying different things, having the opportunity to go on different projects, but also working with different people as well. So, yeah, <laughs> not sure about to bring good answer. Yeah. <laughs> It makes me want to come and work with PwC when you say things like that. That's great. And Brian, I think picking up on what Alade said that I think you're involved in quite a lot outside of your day job, aren't you? Because I am right in thinking you're on the Staff Diversity Council. I said that earlier and I was like, I'm 99% sure he is. So I've gone for it. Can you tell us a little bit about the work? And it's relatively new, but what, how you ended up on the council and what that involves? Yeah, sure, certainly. So um, for those of you who don't know, the Staff Diversity Council is um a it's it's almost like a body that was um that was created off the back of the black lives matter movement and the 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 events that happened last uh, last year last summer and it's kevin ellis who's our chairman it's one of his five points that he he created this council to to address the inequalities that um that are, are happening in our in our industry and more specifically, the the council looks to to represent the the uh, the voices and the and the ideas and the genders of the different people groups that we have across the firm. So that could be um, Jews, Blacks, Asians, Chinese, dis disabled, disability, carers. There's um, eleven people groups actually within within the firm, and we we come together every quarter. Um, to discuss um, topics, ways to move forward, whether it's, as Charlotte mentioned, uh, publishing um, targets and uh, ethnicity pay gaps and gender pay gaps. These are all issues which are at the forefront. Uh, they're in the press. And this group essentially is there to hold to account our, our leaders and people mm -hmm. in the firm to ensure that more people like yourselves can be when you come into the firm there is room and scope for you to to grow to grow your careers and not have to worry about some of those issues that perhaps you know would hinder your progression through the firm um, and i love the fact that we focus on inclusion in front of diversity because for me um, being included shows that you're in the room and how can you have diversity if you're not in the room? So that's diversity of thought, opinions, race, disability, et cetera. 
So I think it's really important that we have something like this in PwC, because like I mentioned, we don't only just talk about targets and ethnicity pay gaps, we talk about fair access to work, sponsorships, mentoring programs, and much more. And it's kind of like a holistic thing that helps to shape the strategic vision of the firm. Um, I got involved because I'm really passionate about diversity and inclusion. I, I do quite a bit as well outside of work in terms of mentoring. I'm a school governor. So I like to, to give back to, to my community. And so when the opportunity came, came around to apply uh, for the Staff Diversity Council, I jumped at it and I was really lucky to, to get chosen. So. Brian did really well to get chosen, everyone, because I think there was like 900 applications, wasn't there, right? Yeah. So. 975 <laughs> well to be. To be <laughs> okay. <laughs> so basically a thousand. <laughs> um, I think that that's really important for everyone to know on the call who's thinking about applying. I can see lots of people asking about the recruitment process, which is always a good sign. Um, to know about why we focus on these things, why they're important, that from the chairman to the most junior, that we we get a lot of information on a weekly basis about loads of different types of, of DNI now and it's it's actually really brilliant because it's about educating us all on topics that we don't know a huge amount um, um we might I know how I know as a female I know about but I don't know as a black person and I don't know what you know in terms of good top tips on things in terms of interactions in terms of things that you've experienced that I won't have and it's so important that we understand that and that we can work the inclusion point is so right Brian that we can work together and make sure that we understand about cultures and values of other people so I think for anyone thinking about applying for a, com a company and why we're, we're focusing on it to understand that in the recruitment process and then when you join us if you join us that's a really key thing to understand I'm going to do five more questions, five more minutes of questions, and then I'll move on to the recruitment process so that everyone knows about that, which is always important. But really interested in everyone's favorite project that they've done at work so far. So, Beth, you first. Okay. Um, so, obviously, I'm new, so I've only done a couple now. Um, but my favorite that I'm, well, I can't really say much about it, so it's not that juicy. But my favorite at the moment is I'm working on the COVID response. So, uh, well, part of the COVID response. So my role at the moment is I'm looking after over nearly 60 of our team. I've just onboarded three more today um, who are all working on that. And I think what's so exciting about it is um, you can see daily on the news the impact that our team is having. So something we've discussed the day before or the week before, and we're talking about how that's due to come in. We see that on the news and I sit there and I think that's my team. And it's, it's so exciting. And although I'm not directly client facing in this role, my role at the moment is just looking after our six, nearly 60 people um but it's just knowing that um that that's our team that's doing that which is really exciting so that's my most exciting project at the moment maybe it'll change in the future but i feel like that <laughs> that is a pretty like a pretty good one to start with so totally totally and i'll say what about you you've been at the firm a bit longer yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what I can actually talk about. I think my example is not going to be as altruistic as the COVID response. But <laughs> um, one of the projects I worked on that was actually quite interesting was um, as part of in my team, we would do some investigations and investigations can range from anything, investigating people or investigating um, companies or businesses. But I quite enjoy the investigation of people because a lot of the time this entails of going through like, you know, emails, personal emails, personal, um, you know, text messages as well. We had a particularly funny review where we were listening to like hour long conversations between a wife and a husband trying to sort out like their travel plans. And so <laughs> that was a really funny one because we were working together in the office. So we were all working together at a table um, and it just, you just randomly burst out laughing some of the things that you would hear. So that was uh, more, one of the more interesting projects I've worked on. How funny. <laughs> <laughs> feels like you get a bit of an insight into some people's yeah. lives there <laughs> and Brian what about you so um I sit in the in the technology kind of part of the business uh and it's not a client facing role so it's all supporting um our internal firm services um and my last project was really exciting because the firm took the decision to scale back its um its technology footprint and especially all of the kind of um, legacy databases and legacy tech, which we spend a lot of money on at the moment. So we've decided to pivot 
bin all of those and go more towards um, cloud technology. So everything's been hosted now on the cloud, whether it's uh, Salesforce that look at our opportunities, Google, which is what we use for our collaboration, um, ServiceNow, which is what we use for our ticketing type systems. Um, so that whole program was essentially to help the firm pivot from our legacy systems to a more forward looking five to 10 year plan uh, what it would look like in the future. So it was a really exciting project, getting to know lots of people in the business, um, getting their requirements, understand those and translating them in a way which we can definitely say in five to 10 years time, our business will be positioned in this way and um, save some money. <laughs> and we imagine the possible back to our values at yes. the beginning everywhere. <laughs> Exactly. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. That's great. And one last question for everyone. Um, Beth, again, you can go first. What advice? It's not that long ago for you, so maybe I shouldn't have given it to you. What advice would you give your 20 year old self? My 20 year old self? Which is basically last year for you. So like, this is, <laughs> I'm 23 in April, so this isn't. Okay, so. Okay. 20 year old self. So what was I doing then? I was in sec second year uni? Yeah. Okay. Um gosh, I don't or know. 19. You can go for 19 if you want. That feels like longer ago for you. Okay. <laughs> um I actually I actually don't know. My my advice would be um well being from Liverpool, if no one could tell by the accent, I think and I've seen a couple of questions around regarding Russell groups. I did go to Durham, which obviously is a Russell group, but I have friends who didn't go to Russell groups. And I think I still have this imposter syndrome or had this imposter syndrome that these people are referring to in the mess in the questions. But my my main thing would be back yourself. Don't make yourself. Don't allow yourself to feel inadequate. Or for example, in PwC, when I first heard of the firm, I thought, "Oh, they're this elite organisation. They must have this magic ingredient. They must be these specific type of people." And I think from being on the Women in Business program, I learned. I was like, actually, I can aspire to do what these people have done in their careers. And there there isn't this magic ingredient that makes someone better than me. Um, and I think, yeah, so the advice to myself would be is back yourself. And I still say this in the firm now. I say to everyone, my little motto that I live by is fake it till you make it. You might not be confident inside, but pretend you are and just own it. And that will take you so far and never let anyone tell you that you're not as good as, as another person or don't put yourself off applying because you think you won't get it. Like you, what, what's that big saying that everyone says? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Just go for it. That would be my main my main um, advice to myself. Good tip. Thanks, Beth. Lala Day, what about you? Yeah. Um, yeah, no advice to my 20 year old self. I suppose I kind of <laughs> echo some of what Beth was saying and that just believe in yourself, but also like just don't stress. Like I think, um, actually to be fair, it wasn't that long ago, my 20 year old self as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think it would just be don't stress about having, you know, your 10 year, 15 year plan figured out of course it's good to have goals but I think we've all realized with everything that's happened in the last uh, year or so mm -hmm. that life is so changeable like you never know where you're going to end up and you never know where careers your career will end up so just be open and um, don't worry about it and eventually you'll land in the place that you're meant to be. Perfect and Brian we'll finish with you. Your 20 year old Ooh. self was that last year? <laughs> Sadly not, no. <laughs> my 20-year-old self, what would I tell my 20-year-old self? I, I echo what both Beth and uh, Oluladeh said. Um, but I would also add to that, have a plan and work your plan, right? Because I'll, I have a little personal motto as well. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail, okay? Yeah. Uh, and a funny story, I remember when... Um, I, when I was working at, at TFL, so I, I had a friend, I still, still my friend, he works, he used to work at Shell uh, in central London. And I met him up for, for lunch at Embankment Place. So we have an office at Embankment Place. And I remember seeing all these people in their posh suits coming out of this building. And I thought, what's that building? And I never knew where PwC was. And I thought, ah, oh, PwC. Wow. I remember thinking, it would be nice to work there. <laughs> it's, it's quite cool little did i know just under two years i'll be work, walking through that those same doors myself Brilliant. so you know just uh keep focused have your plan work your plan is what i'll add 
Oh, that's great. Thank you so much to my amazing panel. Well done, everyone. I'm sure that the audience are clapping at the same time. Thank you so much for giving up your time. I know it's really busy at the firm at the minute. So thank you so much and some great top tips there. See you all later. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Fab. So we'll go back to the slides now. I, I think there's been quite a lot of questions about the um, application process. So hopefully I can answer some of them. And I did say something wrong about women in business before, so I will correct myself at the end of the session. But hopefully that panel was really helpful for everyone. Some really great, um, just some very, just the sort of people that work at PwC, just thought, think it's useful to give a flavor for all the different types of people, different types of work we're doing. So the important recruitment process. So this kind of, are three key stages of the recruitment process but before that you have to do an application form so the application form just so everyone knows effectively that's for our data gathering we don't specifically look we can't because of um, data protection we can't specifically look at a specific person on there so i think people get worried about application forms and the information you give on there that's just to see for things like um say female talent how are we getting on on that it's really useful for us and obviously there's some basic information in there that we need to know as well then the first stage is our game-based assessment, so our career unlocked. I'm going to do a couple of top tips on that, just specifically on the very first stage for you all, just so you're aware of what we're looking for. Then our video interview. So I think a couple of people have asked questions about with it being virtual, how do you stand out from the crowd? So the game-based assessment, the first stage, is um, that is quite hard to stand out from the crowd. You have to just be your true self on that. But from the video on interview to the virtual career focus stage, that's where we start seeing your personality a lot more. So in the video interview, you'll be asked quite a lot of motivational questions in terms of why you've applied for the area of the business and why you've applied for the specific program. So and why specifically PwC. So make sure things like this session hopefully give you a bit of a feel for it. But after this, go away and do your research on the website. There's some really amazing bios on there. There's loads of amazing videos. There's some specific content in terms of um, in terms of um, each area of the business so trying to work out how your personality fits with the different areas definitely spend some time on that there's um kind of two motivational questions and about four um four to five situational questions that look at if you were a pwc and working for us what would you do to deal with certain situations so instead of it being very focused on what you've done in the past it's much more focused on what's your skills and what might we see in the future and then if you get through that stage, you do our virtual career focus day. So that's over primarily over Google Hangout. So you'll have um, various interactions. So you'll do a written exercise, you'll do a numerical exercise, you'll do a group discussion reading about a specific business case, and you'll also do another interview with one of our team. Um, again, just picking out a little bit more on the video interview, why you've applied for the area, why you've applied for the role, and what do you know about that? Particularly key there is if you're applying for anything that eventually leads to a qualification. So I mentioned earlier, if you apply for audit, you do tend to go on to do a pro professional qualification. Make sure you're really well versed in, um, we do the ICAW primarily in, in England and we do ICAS in Scotland. So make sure you're, you're really aware of, of kind of any professional qualification linked to the role. Just so everyone knows, for our first year program, so Women in Business and Black Talent in Business are our only first year programs, you go through the full recruitment process, which probably sounds like quite a lot to do to get onto three days shadowing. But the reason is, if you get through the three days, um, if you get onto the program, then I've talked about this sort of three step process. You do this in year one, in year two, you might do an internship, or if you're on a work placement year, you might do a work placement, and then hopefully the grad role. So you don't have to go through any of the recruitment process again. So just so everyone knows it, it can it probably feels quite long but it's hopefully a good stepping stone for you so pwc professional i've mentioned earlier this just talks through the five key skills that we look for so whole leadership business acumen technical and digital global inclusive and relationships so um this is on the website and this is really useful just to start you thinking about prep for the session so um some of the competency questions that we ask in the in the interview will focus on um these areas and and kind of situations you might find yourself in so have a read of these questions there's some more on the website and think about the answers you might give if um we're pursuing we're sort of focusing on those on those competencies. So the application form I've noted, just one thing just to note on there, if anyone does need any adjustments, if you have any adjustments at university, for example, extra time for any specific reason, make sure you're disclosing them. We don't, no judgment or anything like that. We just want to give everyone the best possible chance to get through the recruitment process. So please make sure you disclose that on there. Thought it was just useful to pull out a little bit more about the game based assessment. As I mentioned earlier, that's the first stage. So 
Um, we know it can be really stressful to do psychometric testing, which effectively this is, um, but we we brought in this total tech enabled approach. So um, it, it is effectively a game. People quite often, people quite enjoy it. And it is looking at your behaviors and your reaction in different situations. So just a couple of things about how to prepare and what might be useful. So um, remember quite a lot of the tests of time. So practice until you're used to being timed. If you've not done anything like that before, there's quite a lot of examples online in terms of numerical tests. So um, if um, quite a few questions about people, if you have, if you can only apply for these programs, if you're doing maths or a business program, definitely not. Like any degree background we look for for any of these skills would take on about 40 percent people from a non-business background or economics or maths background but just make sure you're prepping if you're not doing anything numerical based that you're looking for some numeric you're practicing some numerical skills um so practice some basic percentage ratios um um currency conversion stuff so have a little look at some examples around that again just remind yourself how to use graphs and how to read charge charts Sorry. Um, and then logic skills. So you can sharpen your um, logical reasoning skills by doing puzzles, making sure that you do things like that. So just it sounds quite basic, but just re-familiarizing yourself with it, those kind of skills is key. So we're looking to see how you naturally approach different tasks. So there's no, you can't play the game. There's no, there's, it's just reacting on how you will deal with different situations. But remember the time limits is one key thing that I've mentioned to you all. Um, many of the data points we capture are unobservable, so the best approach is just to be comfortable and be yourself. But key is to read the instructions, make sure you give enough time to the, the, to the exercise, complete the practice tests, there's some really good practice tests out there, and be as relaxed as you can and follow your instincts. Um, this just reiterates that, but just so everyone knows, just in case anyone doesn't have access to a computer, you can play the game on your phone or your tablet. Um, and as I say, key thing here, really basic, is make sure if you can, you have really good internet access so it's not cutting out or causing you any issues at that point as well. Um, but key thing is just go with your gut and make sure that you um, make sure you follow, um, make sure you go with your gut, sorry. Um, so a couple of people have been asking about practice sessions, about um, things like that. So you will get a follow up email with some of this detail in here, but the employability hub is really fantastic on there. Um, there's some um, there's some more actually on here than than's on this slide. And on there, we have some on um, virtual assessment. So make sure you're going on there and having a look at the top tips on there as well. Um, that's the same for if you get to the video interview there's some there's some really good do's and don'ts videos on there that are quite useful especially for you guys who might never have experienced anything like this before we want to just make sure you, you're given the best possible chance of doing that if you do um, get past the game-based assessment just so you all know for women in business and black talent in business if you are eligible and you get through um, you're actually invited to a specific hints and tips session for the video interview just to give you some more um, preparation for that so just um, thought it was useful just to um, put up the code again here that one's for black talent in business but if you look for women in business but just wanted to cover a couple of final questions that have come through um, you can only apply for one program at PwC at a time um, we have a really strict rule about, again, about that. So don't don't apply for multiple women in business programs or a women in business program and an internship or whatever it might be that you're eligible for. Just apply for one at a time. If by any chance you aren't successful, we do have a six month rule that you can reapply again six months later. Um, that's a key one for you guys, particularly if you're in your first year and it means that you, you can practice this year and if at any stage you, you'll get feedback if you don't um, succeed and you can act on that feedback again by reapplying in six months for another role. Um, there's a couple of people that are asking about whether how you prove you're on track for a 2-1 it's, it's more difficult for you um, when you're in your first year so if you've had any exam results make sure you disclose them um, what we will do through each step of the process is just check about whether you're on um, target for a 2-1 um, or not so each stage I did make one error before just so everyone knows so if you're on a four-year degree but one of the years isn't a work placement year you actually need to wait until next year to apply um, I think I think Helen sent me that a couple of times she's absolutely right so sorry about that everyone it, it's uh, you're only eligible if you're on your first year of a four-year degree but one of those years is a work placement year if you're on four years and it's a four-year normal course without a work placement then you are totally eligible for these but for next year the reason is because we're gearing you up for the next stage of everything so if in your second of uh, four years you do women in business then the following summer you could do the internship so sorry about that just to just to clarify for everyone on that point so thank you Helen so much for keeping me right on that one 
Um, just time to look two more minutes just to see if we've got deadline for applications. So a really good question um, is the, let me just double check. I think it's the 17th um, for the first stages, but I'll just tell everyone so that you know exactly all the different deadlines. Two seconds, I've just got it on a different, um, a different page, two seconds, everyone. I'll give you them all because there's different deadlines for the video interview and things like that. So two seconds. It is. So it's the 19th is the deadline for your application. The 26th is the deadline for the online assessment. So that includes the video interview. And then um, we will be doing an insight session mid April for anyone. And then the assessment centers won't take place until May the 20, um, May the 21st, sorry, the middle of May, uh, early to the middle of May. Um, so they're the deadlines. If anyone wants to, they're on the job description. So if you are in the process of applying, um, then you can just um, on the apply for job section, you'll see all those details as well. Um, cool, I think that's, um, I know there's still some more questions coming in. Hopefully I'm gonna send a follow-up email. Someone did say, do we sponsor visas a, a little bit earlier? And we do sponsor visas, but the, there's a section on the website that I'd be, make sure you read because there's some, there's some caveats in terms of what we do and don't do. So make sure you look at that. There's a work permit section on the PwC website. So please refer to that. So hopefully you found that really useful from everyone. Um, as I say, you'll get a follow up email and there's loads of great information on there in terms of the website. Um, our panelists were fantastic today, really honest and frank and some amazing top tips. But um, don't forget, you have to be in it to win it. So if you are interested in applying, make sure that you go away, do your research on the website, see what you're eligible for uh, and put in your application. But thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, enjoy your enjoy your afternoons, evening. Talk to you later.